Okay guys, we are back again with part two, lake pigments. Now, when you're making paint pigments, lake pigments, from my understanding, are pigments that are made for soaking something in water to extract the color from it. Then you drain off the chunky bits and you take the water and there's a chemical process for pulling the color out of the water in layman's terms. I don't completely understand it. I'm still working on why you can get the color, how you can get the color, which things added to what the water give you what color, all of that stuff. But that's the basics. So we are going to go back with the garbage weird flowers I found in my collection from part one. And I put the rest of the flowers in my um, blender because I do want to chop them up a little bit before I put them in the jar. So let's do that. I do find that you can pull more color, color out of the item, whether it's a fresh item or in this case a dried item, if you chop it up a little bit first. And to just keep it easy, I either use this grinder if it's dry or I have another bigger blender thing I have used in the past for making paper that I got really cheap at um, the grocery outlet, a discount grocery store. And um, I'll, for fresh things, I'll use that. Um, but whatever it is, I just find it's easier if I grind it up. I'm going to whack this on the table to get the dry bits off the bottom. Okay. Again, wear a mask when you're doing this because you will find smoke will come up and hit you in the face. You don't want to breathe that in. So I'm going to put all of the dry material in here, at least as much of it as I can get in there without spilling it on the table, which I'm not being very successful at doing. Okay, so I use these small five ounce jars because I don't want to make necessarily a ton of pigment, especially with the new things. I'm not sure what color I'm going to get, if any. So um, I always do a small batch and then if I find I get a really great color out of it and I really like it, then I will go back and make more. So now that I have the ground flowers in there, I'm just going to fill it up. This is distilled water. You do want to be careful about using distilled water because it will help uh, eliminate some bacteria. And see, there's already some color in the water. It's only been like two seconds and the water's already turning color. So that means we'll get something or we should get something. So now I let this sit for at least a few hours, but usually overnight before I go on to the next step. That being said, I will say that you don't when you're doing this process, don't get your hopes up. Just because this is a pretty color of brown already doesn't mean that that's the color you're going to end up with or that it's going to work well. Some of them, for whatever reason, work better than others. Um, some of them, I don't know if I'm just doing chemically something wrong, but I just end up pulling no color from, for instance. Um, I have right next to me a failed one. <laughs> so we have these porch flowers, verbinia. I think that's what they are and they're purple and when I slake when I soaked them in some water the water was very very purple um, when I used them fresh I got this pretty green right here when I laked them and went through the whole process of soaking it and then in the next part I'll show you how what we do with this after I got this <laughs> which is in purple or green, and do you even see any color on there? Because I don't. Yeah, so I'm not sure. That might just be a, a garbage. <laughs> so they don't all come out. But in the meantime, we're going to let this sit at least overnight, and we'll come back to it, and then I'll show you what else we do with that. Okay, guys, I'm just coming on here because it's only been not even an hour, and can you see the color of that water? So when you're laking your pigments, if you get that a color that's nice and dark like that, you're going to get something um, out of the um, 
leaking process as far as pigment is concerned. Right now looking at this you would think it's going to be brown but there's no guarantees. I've done red roses like this. The water's very red but when all is said and done because of the chemical reactions the pigment actually comes out actually a very pretty green. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. I am going to go ahead and leave it set overnight even though um, I kind of want to see what it does now. We're not going to do that. I'm going to give it a shake. Um, which is what I do. Now you can, of course, um, simmer these in hot water. I don't do that. I'm sure you'd get a different um, color maybe, maybe more pigment out of it. Um, if it was warm, I never do that. Sometimes I warm up the distilled water and put it in there, but I find I get um, pigments just fine doing it this way. So that's just up to me. You guys should try it a couple of different ways and see what happens. All right, enough of that. I'll be back for you guys in just a minute. For me, it'll be tomorrow. I'll be back. Hey guys, all right. So it's a few days later for me, just a minute or second for you. Um, so this has been sitting for a couple of days. Um, to my surprise, the water has turned nice dark brown. I didn't really expect that, but cool. So once you've soaked your usually botanical um, thing from that you want to make your paint pigment from. Um, if you're doing it my way for at least 24 hours, sometimes I just let it go until I kind of have forgotten about it and then I come back and drain it. Um, it if you're simmering it on the stove, um, then you just simmer it for like an hour or so. Now I will say in my experience, simmering the item versus just leaving it in the jar and soak, you get different colors with some things. Some things you'll get the same color, it's just quicker to simmer it. Um, I have not found any issue so far with just putting it in a jar with like room temperature or warm water and just leaving it sit for a couple of days. That being said, if you're gonna try this, you might wanna try a couple of different ways and see what way works for you. So, okay. So we are going to strain this in a fine mesh strainer over this large pot as soon as I get it open. Uh, someday, oh, hold on. I got it, I had to use my handy dandy tool, jar opening tool. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do, once you're ready to make your lake pigment out of it, is we're gonna strain off the chunky bits because you just want the colored water. So we're gonna just pour it in here. Now sometimes I'll take the pulp and I'll put it in a cookie sheet on wax paper and set it aside for a few days and let it dry out and use it as sort of an earth pigment. That being said, when you've had the pulp soaking in the water, you usually get sort of a lighter color um, of whatever this was gonna be originally. But sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes it just is an interesting texture to add to like acrylic paint for like a texture thing. So, but in this case, I'm just gonna let it go. Okay. I need, we'll use this. And I'm just gonna kind of do this and make sure I've gotten all the water out. Okay, and this is trash. So we're gonna dump that. Okay, now we have this. There are some like chunk, like little bits of material floating in there, but I'm okay with that. I could probably run it through another strain with a coffee filter, but, and you might wanna do that. I'm not going to. Okay, so the next I'm going to add some alum. And again, this is five ounces of water. So I add one teaspoon of alum. Now, if I've taken the alum and dissolved it in water, it's a one-to-one -one mix. And then I will dissolve it in water and then I'll add two tables, uh, teaspoons of that alum water to um, the pigment powder or pigment water. And there is some kind of chemical reaction that I don't really understand when I add the alum to the water that changes the color nine times out of 10. Give it a good stir. Oh, 
to make sure all the chunks are dissolved. That's why it's um, sometimes good to um, dissolve the alum in water ahead because it's easier to add it and get it dissolved once you're pretty sure it's dissolved. Then you need a tablespoon and some baking soda or washing soda. And a tablespoon of baking soda. Now if you again want to dissolve your baking soda in water before you do this, it's one part baking soda to eight parts water and then do two tablespoons of that water mixture. In this case, we're gonna just use the dry. Now, you want a big container for this because this is gonna bubble and foam up if you've added enough alum. If it doesn't bubble and foam up, add more alum because you haven't added enough. See? It should do that. That's exactly what it should do. Give it a good stir. Make sure everything's dissolved. There's something about the chemical process between the alum and the baking soda that allows the color in the water to grab on to the alum. The baking soda makes it sink to the bottom. And that becomes your pigment powder later. Now, what you wanna do is just let that sit. Now, I let it sit for minimum a couple hours, sometimes overnight, um, and then I will do the next step. I have a little video clip of me doing that next step, which I will insert here. Okay, if you hear that jingling in the background, my husband is out running around in the front yard and it's the security camera, so I apologize. So once you've taken the pigment sort of gelatinous stuff that's left in the coffee filter after you drain off the water and you've put it on this piece of wax paper, you've let it dry for a couple of days, it will get hard. And then this is your pigment. So then you just carefully Using a palette knife. That jingling is just, hold on one second. Let's turn off the sound on my phone and see if that helps. Okay. So you use a flat edge of the palette knife carefully and just scrape the pigment from the coffee filter. Now, I don't usually bother grinding it until I'm going to use it, but in this case this is kind of a lot and so I'm going to grind it because it'll fit in my container better. So hang on. When you're grinding it, like when you're doing earth pigments, you want to remember to take precautions. Wear gloves, wear a mask, wear some eye protection. I'm going to pour all of this into my grinder which is at the corner of your screen. And again, this is just a Mr. Coffee, coffee and spice grinder. It doesn't say which one, but this is one that does coarse, medium, or fine. I always have it turned to fine for this most of the time. Lid on, put my mask up and grind. Oops, after I turn the power on. There we go. There's two things I want to point out. See how the texture of this is very flower-like? That's what you want on your pigment ideally to get a nice smooth paint out of it, but see the color of this that came out? This is my failed one, the Verbinia, which obviously I didn't bother to grind too well. Yeah, and this one has no color. So I'm not super confident this one's gonna have any color either, but I guess at some point before I decide to add it to the shelf, I'll find out. 
In the meantime, we're gonna set that one aside and I've got two more to do. These are the butterfly pea flowers that in their raw natural form give you a very nice pretty blue paint. That blue right there. I don't know what happens if you lake them, so I did lake them, and I guess we'll find out. So let me let me do what I just did with the other one to these, and I'll be right back. There's a small possibility I was wrong about the pansy flowers, um, but let's test it out. Now, with some colors, they do change. It's a very pale yellow, but it is definitely yellow. So I might have been wrong about that. Um, with some colors, they change as they dry. And you will find if you're going to experiment with this, as I think I've said before, some like the uh, butterfly pea flower, which if you use that ground flower again in the paint medium, it's very blue. If you extract the color from the flower in the laking process and then make pink from it, it's a very pretty green. I mean, I'm not mad about those colors. So yes, I'll be keeping the pansy pigment this is the one that I still think is a failure. I put some water in here. It's been dry for a couple of days. But, I mean, can you see anything? Because I can't really. I don't, there's really not much there. So I do think this particular one is a failure. If I'm going to keep one of these, I'm going to keep this one because that's actually a very pretty pale yellow, pastel yellow. But anyway, so I'll have to wash that one out and that's a failure. But that's how it goes with some of these. I'm having a lot of fun making pigments and painting with them. This is a little, besides my notes that I've been keeping, this is a little small journal that I've been using with the paints. If you are somebody who knows more about making pigments than I do and you have some suggestions to improve what I'm doing or, you know, kind criticism about something I'm doing wrong, please let me know down in the comments below or send me a private message. Um, if you're in my Facebook group, you can tag me in a post over there. If you try making your own pigments, whether you just grind up things to put in a paint medium or you try the laking process, I would love to see how your experiments turned out and what you're doing with them. Um, um, so there are going to be some things that you want to make earth or lake pigments from, but you have to grind them or dry them and or dry them first, like red onion. Now, red onion, in its natural form gives, I know it's a red onion, but I get this pretty green. Now anybody who's made dye out of red onions knows if you simmer them, you get a red color. Um, I got this green color from just ground red onions powdered um, and added to the paint medium. When I laked the red onions, I got brown. They're on here somewhere. Mm -mm 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 -mm. They're on here somewhere. Oh, here, red onion. 
Um, now I haven't boiled the red onions and then laked the boiling water that's red. I have this feeling I'd still get the brown um, because of the chemical reactions. Now, what I do with things like red onion, especially food things, is I will grind them and basically puree them in a blender with no water or very little water. Then I will spread them out thin in a cookie sheet on a piece of uh, parchment paper and I'll put it in the oven at the lowest temperature for like three or four hours and really dry it out until it's crumbly and then come upstairs, blend it with my grinder and then use that as either an earth pigment or use it to soak in water as a lake pigment. That works actually very well. There's a video here on YouTube about salting uh, vegetables. I think that's what it's called. I'll find it and I'll put the link down below. And I use his process for making pigments out of more food type things um, or even like the wild blackberries, things that are very like thick and juicy, um, that aren't flowers. With the flowers, I also grind them up, but then I spread them out on a cookie sheet and I just leave them up here in the art room for a couple of days and they just dry out real easy. But with more thick pulpy things, I think you have to dehydrate them in the oven, but it does work very well. I have, a cum this is the earth side, this is the lake side. You see the lake side's got a lot of browns in it. Well, now it's gonna have this real pretty green and a yellow. Um, I have yet to have a blue or a red. <laughs> but I can use some of these with some of these and that works. Um, so, and the turmeric, this is another one. So turmeric straight added to paint medium, you get this dark yellow. If you lake the turmeric and do the process we just did, you get this orange. So anyway, see what you can, um, come up with with this process, where it leads you, where you go, and what kind of new art things you can come up with. I'd love to see. Please share, like, share, and subscribe. Um, again, tag me in a post on social media somewhere if you try this and or you have information to share with me. I'd love to hear it. And above all, have fun, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.